I'm gonna make myself an autumn wardrobe. So this is all my fabric. Okay, let's go. So I want to make myself more autumnal clothes. I kind of want to make a little mini capsule wardrobe-ish thing. I have the goal to make as many autumnal clothing pieces as I can in this video. Do I know if it's going to work? No. Do I know how I'm going to structure it? Absolutely not. All I know is that I have a pile of autumnal toned fabric and I need to make some stuff. I've been trying to buy a lot less lately, be more sustainable, make things if I can, thrift things if I can. And I have a little stockpile of like autumn toned fabric that I need to use. Will you learn anything from this video? Probably not. But that's why it's good that I have a sponsor, which is Skillshare, who can teach you things like <laughs> how to sew your own clothes. Because I am a chaos hobbit and I am, I suck at teaching. So we'll talk about Skillshare later, but for right now, I have zero plans. I just have lots of fabric. So for this first dress, I really desperately wanted to use this butterick pattern from the 1990s or the 1980s. I loved the sleeveless option. I thought it'd be such a cute layering piece. And so I started to iron my fabric because I had washed it. It had been spilled upon by probably coffee. And you should always wash your fabric. But in this case, it desperately needed it. Since the bodice on that pattern was missing, which did I mention that? The bodice in that pattern was missing and I really need a bodice in order to make anything. I can fudge a skirt, but I have to have the bodice pattern. Um, but since the bodice pieces were missing, I decided I was going to go with a different pattern, which I did not end up showing the camera somehow. It is a 1980s skirt pattern. I had to add a couple of inches, which you can kind of see here, and it's got some flap pockets, and then I am going to add a bodice to this. And I made a crucial mistake in cutting out the pattern piece which if you are a sewist, 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 seamstress, you may have noticed. Uh, if not, well, we'll talk about it later. Uh, this fabric was not wide enough to fold selvage to selvage and cut out double. So I cut out all four pieces of the skirt one at a time and therein lies my uh, mistake. <laughs> So the next morning, because I was missing a bodice, I decided to pull out this 1940s pattern. This is a, I, I'm sure you'll be able to see the, the pattern number and whatever. I'll put it here on the screen. But I decided, I had this paper and I decided to trace out the bodice because it's exactly my measurements and I figured it should fit me. So here you can see me doubling up the paper so that I have enough space to trace out the pattern. This is my tried and true way to make dress bodices. Like if I don't have what I need and I know what I want for the skirt, I will just do this. It's, it's pretty easy. <laughs> bodices are not that complicated to me. I know that they sometimes can feel like it to other people, but since it's a pinafore, there's no sleeves to worry about, etc, etc. It was actually not too hard. And here I am just kind of making sure that it fits properly, that I didn't need to make any major adjustments, which the one thing I wanted to do was lower the neckline and narrow the strap. So I did that.
here you can see me adding a little bit of a flap for a button placket which um that was like mistake number two <laughs> is this my second mistake whatever it's a, it was another mistake i didn't actually need to do this because i ended up having too much room in the bodice anyway um but again you'll see that later and i did add on seam allowance here which another thing i didn't need to do because the <laughs> The pattern I was tracing already had seam allowances added to it. You know what? I just I just took too many extra steps. And um, here I am kind of looking at the pattern, making sure it's generally the shape and size that I need it to be. I work better by draping things on myself once they are sewn and then making adjustments. So we will absolutely get to that because I absolutely had to make some adjustments. But here I am folding the fabric in half thank goodness i did this at least for the bodice because then we would have had a disaster on our hands i am really not good at teaching sewing so uh Skillshare is sponsoring this video. I will talk about them later, but I will say right here, if you really want to learn how to sew, you need to go join Skillshare because like go watch my ad, see the deal they're giving us for this video and join Skillshare because you will learn so much more from them than you ever would from me. Um, but yeah, cutting out the pieces as you do. Then I had cut the back out and I matched up the front to see how much narrower I needed to make the uh, strap. And I also decided to lower the back just a, a tiny bit. I find that vintage patterns are often too, like just too high in general on the neckline and the back neckline for my liking. Um, and here I am pinning everything together to see how it will vaguely fit me. Again, I, I make all of my adjustments once I've sewn things together, but... I did like the general look and fit of this, so I didn't have any major changes to do before it was sewn. And in case you're wondering what I'm listening to, I'm listening to an audiobook. I, that is my favorite way to sew now, is to listen to a book. So then I cut out the uh, pockets and <laughs> again, I folded these in half so that I didn't have to cut out individual pieces, which is good because one of the mistakes I made, uh, which we will talk about when we get to it, uh, this saved me once again that I doubled the fabric here. This pocket in particular, particular has a little uh, acute flap on the outside of the pocket. Um, so that is why the shape is so interesting. Um, and I actually ended up not having a whole lot of this fabric left when I was done, which surprised me. But I guess I should have known because it was not, like it was so narrow that I couldn't get a whole lot out of it, even though it was nine yards. Um, so then I had forgotten that I did not cut out any facing, which I need. I'm not going to hem these edges. So I needed to cut out a facing, which is on the inside of a garment to make it so that you have finished seams around the armholes and the neckline. And it's not just a raw edge. Uh, that's, that's an important piece of a garment and I'm just cutting it out of scraps, but I cut individual pieces. And again, <laughs> that was a mistake. You need to make your pieces opposites. Um, I should have been cutting this out face down and yes, I will say it right now. That is the mistake I also made with the skirt. Here I am laying out the back facing and this is when I realized <laughs> mistake number whatever three. This is when I realized that I had cut the facing out, um, the wrong way <laughs> and, um, it's fine. Nobody's really going to see it, but I did, I did debate for a minute whether I should cut out a new piece of facing before I was like, no, this is the, this is the inside. Nobody's going to look at this. Uh, but anyway, you're supposed to sew your facing pieces together and then your bodice pieces together and at like the shoulder seams and then you sew them all together around the edges so that you have some nice clean edges. Um, and this is not where I realized my mistake with the skirt. Uh, even though, as I'm laying down the pocket pieces, I realized that I had 
I thought I had cut the pocket piece inside out and so I needed to cut a new one so that it would match up properly and the flap would not be the inside of the fabric. But that's not what happened, my my friends. That is That is not the mistake that I made. The mistake that I made is that I did not make my skirt front or my skirt back pieces opposites, which means that I cut out two uh, right sides. I merrily sewed everything on, all the pocket flaps, so that I could then pen the skirt together, make sure that it was going to fit properly, because I had to size it up a little bit. And we're getting to the point where I realized that I had sewn myself a butt flap. And you can see, I mean, I guess it's not really a butt flap. It's more like a, a side leg flap that's not supposed to be there. But it's pointing backwards and it's not supposed to be. And at this point, I had cut out the wrong facing. I had recalibrated how I was going to sew. I had not been able to use the pattern I wanted to use. I was so tired. I was sick. My kids had thrown up the day before. A lot had happened, so I was very frustrated. So frustrated, but let's get into the sponsored part of this video so that you can avoid making the mistakes that I made. Before we get further on into the video, let's talk about Skillshare, who is sponsoring this video and who I think could be incredibly useful to so many of you who have asked me to teach you how to sew. Skillshare is an online learning community that has a wealth of incredible learning potential. Now, for my own purposes, I have been taking sewing classes and I was really excited to see that Bernadette Banner's class is on there on hand sewing because that is something that I desperately need to get better at. And I feel like that's a really great entry level. If you don't know anything about sewing and you want to learn, I would highly recommend Skillshare and Bernadette Banner's class, but there is a wealth of other sewing related things on there as well as just like getting better at social media, getting better at photography, getting better at video editing, getting better at photo editing, <laughs> getting better at marketing and graphic design. I can use things for writing because I am a writer. You can learn at your own pace, which is great for me as a mom because I cannot always sit and watch a class all the way through, but what I love is they break them down into really digestible tidbits. Right now they are offering one of their best offers ever, which is that the first 500 people to use my link and join in on the Skillshare learning will get not only 30 days free, but also 40% off of your first year for the, like the entire year, 40% off. I think that is a great deal and it is the perfect opportunity for all of you in the comments asking me to teach you how to sew, to go learn from someone who is much better at it than I am. So use my link down below if you wanna delve into learning and let's get back to sewing because I am definitely not as good as Bernadette Manor, but I'm trying. Having realized my mistake and the butt flap that I sewed into my skirt, I decided to pull apart the pocket, cut off the flap, cut a new piece because I needed a little bit of seam allowance, and sew it onto the back of the skirt, which is also the wrong side around because I did not think to double my fabric. And I rectified the situation. We got there in the end, friends. We we got there. But it, this, I just, to, there were a lot of mistakes. Um, so I finally, I rectified the pocket. The back piece became the front piece. The front piece became the back piece. It all worked out okay in the end. And then finally, I added buttons. By the way, if you don't, why are you not following me on Instagram? I put up a poll and then I absolutely did not follow the poll results because I decided that I liked certain buttons better than everyone else. So that was the dress done and let's move on to the next thing. absolutely went to the coffee stand to get a drink to pour into this mug. For the aesthetics! Day two of finally having sewing things. That candle is overperforming. So I'm starting to feel better now that I have finished a garment. 
I've told myself if that's the only thing that I get done for this video then so be it. I had a lot of plans and they have all gone awry. Today I really first of all want to try and make this into a skirt. So the thing that I have run into with this fabric, it's a tablecloth, right? So I have a limited amount of fabric to work with. The last time that I made a tablecloth skirt, it was a bigger tablecloth and I did not really measure before I thought about things. Um, and if I were to cut the like the waist out of it, it will then be too short for what I prefer. So my thought is to take this and some scraps of fabric I have that really like I don't know that I have enough of these fabrics to make a whole garment. I don't know about that pairing. Uh, potentially also this. So my thought is to take all of these fabrics and mash them together into a kind of paneled circle skirt. I just want to combine a bunch of different fabrics and make a kind of like scarecrow aesthetic skirt. <laughs> I'm not too solid on what exactly I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna do something with these fabrics because I love the pumpkin fabric and I really want a skirt out of it. The second one, the second project is to take these two fabrics that I think look beautiful together and turn them into a bodice. Um, I've made this bodice before, I made it into a mushroom, I think I've said that already, but um, that is three pieces. So. Those are my two hopes today. And if I can get these done, and if I have time, I do have one other thing that I want to make. Also, I just need all of you to um, appreciate my pumpkin. Isn't he cute? So the first thing that I had to figure out with the skirt is what fabrics I was going to use. Um, I was originally going to use a brown fabric, which you'll see in a minute, but I actually found this plaid as I was walking out of my bedroom to cut out some panels. I set to work cutting out panels. The first thing I did was I folded the tablecloth into quarters, and then I folded it into eighths, and I cut out eight panels just by literally folding it and cutting down the seam line, the, not the seam line, the fold lines. Um, I did not measure this, not one bit. And it also was not exact, which is fine. It's, it's fine. You know, it's fine. I cut out the approximation of a waistband, like just a waist curve, because I, w I planned to just cut out as many panels as I needed to get the waist uh, circumference that I needed. So I knew that it was going to be a really full skirt. The plaid I ended up getting I believe six panels out of um no I got eight panels out of the plaid did I well anyway I got a lot of panels out of the plaid and then I used pinking shears by the way because this had a slight stretch to it I didn't want it to unravel and then I did the math on how many how much how much of a waist I had made myself and it was 36 inches which is my waist measurement so I needed to cut out a few more panels for seam allowance to work um I tried the brown didn't like it tried the red didn't like it found this green it was hideous and then I stumbled upon this white fabric and I had enough to double it and I eyeballed it and when I tell you I was so proud of how close I cut this thing I had exactly enough to cut out four panels which was exactly the inches that I needed in order to cut out <laughs> a waist that like to get enough and here you can see me, see me being super proud of my eyeballing skills because again I didn't measure this I did not measure um but I cut out those four panels and in the end I had 20 panels of fabric which means I had eight of the plaid eight of the pumpkin and four of the white and then I ironed everything and I set to work sewing all of those seams together. Uh, there were a lot of seams. There was 40 seams that I had to go down. It took a while, <laughs> but we got it done. Um, and then I ironed the seams open because that is what you always want to do. This also took forever.
and then I cut out a waistband and I sewed that on and I hemmed it, which took forever again. I, I machined hemmed it. And that was the skirt finished with a button and a snap and we are good to move on to the next project. I don't know if this coffee is going to be enough today. Good morning. Um, it is a rainy day. It is the perfect day to be sewing. Um, but I am exhausted. Yesterday was a really long day. I did not do any sewing. Um, we got a new couch. We went out to dinner. We did lots of fun stuff. Do you care about that? Probably not. This is a sewing video. Anyhow. So today I'm going to make the bodice and I'm hoping that it'll be simple. The one thing that's kind of intimidating me is remembering how to sew it so that I can flip it inside out, outside out. Um, because if I want it to be reversible, you know, I have to like do that. <laughs> but I'm not exactly sure if the corduroy will fit. Um, I, I have to like look at a vest or, or go, like maybe I'll look into Skillshare because I <laughs> don't remember how to flip something inside out like when it's a vest. I've, I've done it before, but I don't remember how it's done. So that's going to be the troubleshooting part of the day. If you know some basics about sewing, I think this vest would be a really good beginner friendly project. Here is the pattern number and it is simplicity, I think. Um, I feel like this is super easy, especially if you're making it reversible, as long as you know how to flip it inside out because you literally only have to cut out three pieces. You have to sew two darts, well, four because you're making it reversible. And then you just have a couple of seams to sew up and that's it, it's so easy. Overall, this is the quickest and easiest of all of the things that I have made. For the corduroy, I did cut out uh, everything with pinking shears because I did not want it to fray. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more advanced but you're still a beginner sewer, uh, a vest like this is pretty easy to make. Um, In order to figure out how I was supposed to flip it inside out, uh, I looked at a vest pattern I own and you were supposed to sew around the neckline, the armholes, um, the bottom of the vest, but you don't sew up the sides. You wanna leave the sides open so that you can flip it inside out. And then I realized I was making a mistake, which is a theme of this video. Have I mentioned that I am a chaos seamstress? Yes, I probably have. I need to sew the shoulder seams together. I'm an idiot. As you heard there, I needed to actually sew the corduroy pieces together first and the uh, just at the shoulder seams, both the uh, corduroy and the cotton, you need to sew the shoulder seams together before you sew the cotton, like the outside to the inside, whatever you want to call it, the front and back, the reversible bits. Uh, you you gotta like sew your whole shape together. Uh, so I did that and then here you can see me sewing around the armholes and the neckline and the bottom and all of that good stuff. Uh, but then you want to cut, um, I don't remember what this is called, but you basically cut along the curve to make it turn inside out nicer um, and the lay flatter when you turn it inside out. And then I began the extremely long and frustrating process of turning it inside out. The first attempt, I literally sat there for five or ten minutes doing my absolute best to flip it inside out, but the corduroy was sticking to itself 
and I was also trying to shove too much fabric through at once and like just the way that I did it was not very smart. I did learn my lesson and the second go around flipping it inside out like the second the other side was actually pretty easy. Once I knew that one of my biggest mistakes was that I was like trying to shove too much of it through at one time. I genuinely thought at one point that it was just fully stuck and I was gonna have to like redo the whole thing with wider shoulder straps. Eventually it worked. Eventually everything worked out. Um, I, you can hand sew your side seams together if you want to. Um, I opted to just fully machine sew. In the end we got there. The very last thing that I had to do was decide what embroidery thread I wanted to enclose the, the opening holes with um, to lace it up, uh, but that was it. That, that, then I was, I was done. Let's get to the reveals. So like the bodice is cute. I actually I I freaking love it. I think when I make another one, I'm going to make the arm straps a little bit wider and I need to add a little bit more room under the arms. But I do like that it doesn't close fully. I that was my intention when I made one last year or 2 years ago, whenever that was. I didn't like I added too much. So this time I tried to add less and I really like that it doesn't touch in the middle. I think it's really cute. Gives me a lot more option for like tightening or loosening wearing it however I want to. I will also eventually, maybe, <clears throat> maybe not. I, I do also eventually want to make um, ties that match or find like stronger ties because what I'm using right now is like a silky bias tape and it works fine, but it's just like not thick enough. The dress, I have zero notes. No notes on the dress. It is absolutely perfect. I will say I probably should have read the skirt <laughs> directions because I think I did the pockets wrong. They were super open when I first sewed them and like you, you literally, if you put something in there, it was gonna fall out. So I did sew up the sides a little bit to close the pockets in a little bit more, but like I have no notes. The dress is super cute. It fits the way that I want it to. Like, I love it. I do need to add pockets to the skirt. And there are a few spots where I noticed that the fabric got ripped or cut into. And this was while I was cutting it out. I think that because I thrifted the fabric, I think potentially whoever had um, the fabric damaged it. So I need to add a couple of patches to the skirt. But overall, like, those are all really minor things. But yeah, again, I'm so happy with the skirt. It is so fun to wear. It is so twirly. Uh, hemming it was not fun, but, um, I love it. I love it so much. I am so happy with all three garments. Uh, this is making me really want to just instantly start making something else. That's, that's it. That's the video. I made three garments in a weekend and 
That's actually a lot more than I've sewn in a long time. Again, if you want to join Skillshare and learn how to sew for yourself, they have a lot of really great craft classes on there. I am currently watching Bernadette Banner so that I can get better at hand sewing because my hand sewing is a mess. You can use my link down below, get 40% off of your first year and 30 days free. And the first 500 people to use my link will get that deal. And that is it from me. I hope that wherever you are, you are feeling safe and loved. And until I see you again, have a beautiful day. And thank you for watching. Bye!